Uh, so today we'll be going into the uh, Vienna Convention of 1969, uh, Article 63, uh, to get a, a understanding and overstanding uh, interpretation on what this particular article uh, is presenting to the reader. Uh, more specifically to nationals, how nationals can enforce treaties to get a, an understanding, all right? So with Article 63, and we'll have one of the matriarchs read Article 63 for us because the matriarchs are the mothers and the reason why we, it's called an article is because it's an art, as in oracles, oracles, articles, oracles come from the matriarch, the matriarchal council. Understanding that when you look at the word oracle, it starts with an O, or a zero, an article starts with an A. The A in the O or the zero represents the beginning, which is the alpha and the omega, all right? The word article starts with an A, which is also the pyramid, which represents the mother, okay? So therefore, must understand that when we're reading articles, these are commands from the mother, not the patriarch. This is the patriarch's who then go out and carry out these orders from the matriarchs, all right? Okay, so let's continue. So with Article 63, what however the matriarchs read it for us, allow. Severance of diplomatic or consular relations. The severance of diplomatic or consular relations between the parties to a treaty does not affect the legal relations established between them by the treaty except insofar as the existence of diplomatic or consular relations is indispensable to the application of the treaty. So first things first that we see, Article 63 is a very short read, right? But it's getting directly to the point. This is a very serious article. They're talking about severance, right? It's like almost like severing a head, something that's final, similar to termination. So therefore, when we're reading it, first things first, we must understand what's being presented in the title itself. Everything starts with the title. You must read the question. That is the question that gives you the understanding of what you're about to read. So it's a severance of diplomatic or consular relations. But let's break down really what it's saying. It's saying severance of diplomatic relations or severance of consular relations. All of these things of what they're talking about is two different things right now. Diplomatic relations is when you're dealing with mediation and arbitration. You're trying to come to a settlement based upon a dispute, a conflict, a defect, something that's going on. Your consular relations is using your consul as representation to talk about the affairs of whatever the defect is as well as consular can now go into a consular court status as well. So your consul, from a connotative linguistics, is your attorneys, your lawyers. From a denotative linguistics, you're talking about your ministers, your consul, your ambassadors. These are people who are heads of state that have been, have been voted in by the people or appointed by the heads of state that have been voted in through their government. So therefore, those Moors who are acting in a capacity that do not have a government, technically the Vienna Convention does not apply to them. So therefore, in this scenario here, in order to be a diplomat, that means you're affiliated with a government. What type of a government? Abstract government? No. A government that's been fully ratified by its people, for its people, with a constitution, a seal, and a trust. So therefore, the Vienna Convention it's only for those who are enforcing a government along with this flag. Do you have a provincial flag for your geographical latitude, longitude area of your land? All right, so let's continue on. Oh, but most importantly, consular court. When diplomatic affairs fall apart, you must understand what are they using as a discussion? They're using the treaty as well as a constitution. They're using the two as a binary opportunity to talk about each national's side of the equation as it relates its parties to a contract. At some point, consular court has to get involved in order to settle the affair. So therefore, in Article 20 of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786-87, that was renewed in 1836, 
It talks about in Article 20, how do you settle the affair? Counsel will validate and make that decision on behalf of the court of Morocco. Let's be specific. When the Treaty of Peace and Friendship was signed by Sidi Mohammed in 1786, it was, it was ratified in the Congress of the United States of America in 1787, but before they ratified in the United States of America, you must understand that in Morocco, the court of Morocco, the land, is where it was originally established by the sovereigns. Only a sovereign can establish a treaty. The person who signs next is subordinate in that contract, similar like you leave in a leasing agreement. The landlord, you're the tenant, you're a subordinate in that position. The United States of America is subordinate at all times and just about all treaties they've ever signed, especially with Moroccans, i.e. Moors. All right? So let's get back to point. So as you see, we've taken our time just to get an understanding of just the title alone. This is how Moors must read to get a comprehensive understanding of what they're about to read, because read means to comprehend, to go into a forensics of understanding. So let's read it now. The severance of diplomatic or the severance of consular relations between parties to a treaty does not affect the legal relations established between them by the treaty, except insofar as the existence of diplomatic or consular relations is indispensable for the application of the treaty. So in terms of our interpretation, what exactly is being said here? That there is no excuse to undermine a treaty. Obligations are obligations. Regardless of the dispute, regardless of the defects, regardless of whether someone wants to uh, agree to be a part of mediation arbitration, whether they want to be a part of the litigation, they have no choice but to come to the table and deal with it from a mediation or arbitration status first to settle their affair as diplomatic representatives speaking that are duly elected by their government, representing their flag and seal. The next level is consular court. The matter must be settled no matter what, using what instrument? What diplomatic instruments being used? That's the question. The treaty. The treaty. All right, so treaties are the supreme law of the land around the world. Why is the treaty the supreme law of the land? It's because it helps deal with disputes of nations who are dealing with a defect, okay? So the treaty is the supreme law of the land, not necessarily the Constitution. The Constitution is the political document that's known around the world and gives you your status and bylaws for your people. More specifically, it outlines the geographical area of your latitude, longitude of your land. But it's really a domestic document, whereas your treaty is an international document. But the treaties come first in terms of when you're dealing with other nations, all right? So let's get back to point. The bottom line here is this, with this one sentence. Treaties are indispensable, or should I say not indispensable, treaties are not indispensable, which means you can't throw them in the trash, you can't dismiss them, you can't undermine them, you can't put them on pause, they cannot be supervened as a dispute. When you can't come to a settlement, even though you utilize the treaty, next step up from there is go directly in the consular court. But who's in consular court? Oh, a judge, a kazi. Well, wait a minute. How can you have a judge without having a government? It is the representatives of the matriarchal council that creates the judicial branch. The ju judicial branch is what establishes Judges. It is the executive branch that signs that into law saying, yes, the legislative branch being the matriarchal council, along with the executive branch, work together to establish who are going to be the officers of the court. So therefore, you cannot be a self-appointed judge or a kazi without a government. That's putting a cart in front of the horse. You must establish your government first in order to have a judge a legitimate, competent, impartial judge on behalf of consular court. 
All right, so therefore, if counsel of court is next, who gave the judge, the Kazi, the status, the importance of maintaining justice? It was the matriarch. I wear this black fez as a semblance of justice. It's not a self-appointed black fez to represent myself with the Kazi. The mothers of, gave me this fez to represent justice, to be the justice out of the five points of life. Love, peace, truth, freedom, and then justice. I'm the justice. But the justice is not self-appointed. I represent the mothers. So therefore, in Article 63, even though it's one sentence, you must understand at the end of the day, treaties are enforced, there must be mediation or arbitration, then consular court, and the consular court of Morocco makes the final decision. If that does not suffice, then it immediately goes into the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, where now you have a referee who can represent both sides of the parties who have a dispute. So therefore, if we go to ICJ, maybe the judge might be from a different country who's impartial to the two parties who have a dispute. All right? So keeping in mind that the United States of America nor the United States as a standalone name corporation, none of them have jurisdiction at the land or in the land of Morocco. They relinquished jurisdiction in 1956 because they lost their court battle against France in which France is in a position where they're the most favored nation to protect the subjects of Morocco. Okay? That was in 1952 through the ICJ. All right? They lost that court battle in international court. So the United States Corporation or the United States of America has jurisdiction in the land or at the land of Morocco. So automatically, Moors have the superior position or lodial status because that's what the treaty says, as well as the United States put on the record that they do not have jurisdiction at the land of Morocco or in the land of Morocco. Got it? All right. So now that we've gone into Article 63, um, we'll go ahead and end there. So hopefully everybody has a basic understanding of that one sentence. Okay?